Hey y'all, today I want to talk about fountain pen ink. This is Platinum Citrus Black, and I got a sample of this because it sounded super interesting, and it definitely is. As you can see, I've used most of it. I've had this ink in this pen for a very long time, actually. And I did that kind of on purpose because this is an iron gall ink, and traditionally iron gall inks are a little bit hard on pens. I think that they are kind of acidic and can be kind of corrosive, but that's that's the old iron gall stuff. Companies that are making iron gall inks these days um, claim to have reformulated the iron gall process so that it is much more gentle on pens. So I kind of left this in here kind of on purpose to see what it would look like during cleaning. Is it going to stain? Is it going to hurt my pen? Um, I love this pen, but it's not irreplaceable. So I wanted to take a look today at um, all aspects of this ink. We're going to look at color, uh, which is, this is a very interesting color. We're going to look at uh, water resistance because this is a water resistant ink. Just all of the different things that you might want to know ahead of time before you make an, a, a purchase. So let's start with the color. It's called Citrus Black, which is kind of a contradiction, right? Citrus is uh fruit it's, it's lemons oranges limes it's bright um and black you know black is not bright so what's interesting about this ink is that it goes down kind of a orangey yellow and as the ink dries and is exposed to air it oxidizes i guess and it becomes dark so it's a color changing ink, which is super interesting. I guess I should just go ahead and do a writing sample and then we'll talk more about the color. And as I do the writing sample, pay attention to how the color changes because I think you'll see in this time lapse how it darkens. Okay, we should probably talk about the quote, and then we'll talk about the color. And as we're talking, it will continue to darken, so that's nice. So this is the chorus from a song called Homeward Bound, and I really like this song quite a bit. If you want to hear it, I'll put a link in the description to my church choir um, singing this song, and it's lovely if you want to take a look. Okay, but it says, Bind me not to the pasture, chain me not to the plow, Set me free to find my calling, and I'll return to you somehow. This has been meaningful to me for quite a long time now, actually. It really sums up a lot of how I feel about life. I remember being in college years ago and just feeling like even though I was in the major I wanted to be in, and I'm so glad I did that major, I just felt so weighed down with homework and all these assignments, and I just felt like the, there was so much I wanted to learn and explore on my own. And I felt like school was keeping me from that. I'm glad I stuck with school. I'm glad I finished it. I, it was great. It was awesome. But often in my life, I've just run into times when I'm like, gosh, I, I have something I want to do with my life. I don't want to just sit behind a desk, whether it's at school or at work or whatever. I don't want to just kind of waste my life away. I want to know what I need to do with my life and I want to go after it. That hit me again after I graduated. I got a job, and it was a fine job in many, many ways, and other ways not so much, but it really ended up being kind of soul-crushing, and I'm glad I was able to find something else. Ultimately, I'm hoping to find ways of making a living that bring me joy. I mean, work is going to be hard. It's, it's going to be emotionally and physically and mentally task taxing, but I hope to find a way to do something meaningful with my life. Um, that's 
partly why I'm donating some of my profits from the pen rests I'm selling to help make the world better. And that's why I'm a writer. I, I want to, I feel like writing is, is my calling um, in a way. I've seen writing touch people's lives and I hope, hope, hope that I can touch people's lives through my own writing. So what's your calling? What's your thing that you need to be set free so you can go do? And if you don't feel like you're free to do it, how can you free yourself to do it? You don't need to abandon the people you love or abandon your work or whatever, but there are probably ways to free up a few minutes here and there to create something meaningful. So I encourage you to try to find ways of doing that. All right, now back to ink, back to pen stuff. Um, you can see how it has darkened quite a bit. In general, I think that the, even the lightest shade is darker than it when it first went down. Let's test that theory really quick here, if I can get my arm around the tripod. Yeah, so you can see how that is lighter than this M here. And then it starts to darken to kind of a rusty brown, um, more than a black. But it will probably continue to darken. In fact, I want to show you where I wrote my little initial writing sample with this ink. Oh, tripod. Okay. So this is on uh, Clairefontaine paper. This is what it looks like after a couple months. I don't think it took a couple months for it to get that dark, but um, I, I did this a while back. So let's see if I can zoom in there so you can get a better look at it. So it is quite dark. It might look a little darker on the screen than it is in actual life. It's kind of a dark brown. And there's a little bit of texture to it, a little bit of shading maybe, but it's a different kind of shading than other high shading inks. It's, I don't know if it's caused by the same thing that makes other inks shade, you know, like just the thickness of the ink, how it's being laid down on the page. With this, it has a lot more to do with how it's being exposed to oxygen. So it could be the reverse. It could be that where there's less ink, there's more oxygen hitting the ink. And so that part is um, darker. So it might be kind of the reverse of normal shading. I'm not really sure, but there's a little bit, you get a little bit of variety of color but nothing really crazy. I wouldn't market this as a shading ink, I guess, even though maybe there's a little bit there. As far as flow goes, it's not extremely wet. Um, but it's not dry either. I'd say it's a little bit more on the wet side, but it's definitely controlled. It's pleasant to use. It really is a nicely formulated ink. I like it quite a bit. The one thing though I don't like as much is actually the color. I'm, I don't find the color as interesting as I thought I would. And I wonder if that's because I'm using white paper instead of off-white or ivory. If you have some ivory paper, I think this might just feel more at home there because you know, this is kind of a yellowy toned ink and that's just gonna maybe blend more with an ivory paper. And I think I've heard people say that this ink is fun because it looks old fashioned on the page. And I could totally see why you would say that. And I think that the ivory paper just kind of lends itself to that vibe. This white paper just kind of clashes with it. So I think that's my problem. It's not the ink. So let's do just a quick, very non-scientific dry time test here. So So I honestly don't know what to tell you as far as, as dry time, because it's not something I typically pay attention to. I'm not really keyed into that, but it does look like it'll dry in a reasonable time. And yeah, I didn't have any problems with smearing as I was writing. I'm right-handed, so it's not a huge issue, but I didn't have to like wait for a super long time before I could flip the page or anything like that. It was, yeah, no problems there. As I mentioned, this ink is water resistant. So we're going to test that now. And it's also um, supposedly good for all archival stuff as well. It's not gonna fade or whatever. Can't test that because we don't have 50 years, but we'll test the water resistance really quick. I'm just gonna drop my finger in this cup of water. Put a couple of drops here. I didn't feel like getting my ink syringes out this time. There we go. All right, so. We will just leave that there for a bit and I will come back in like five minutes 
and we'll see how it looks. And while we're waiting, I'm gonna go get this pen cleaned up so we can see how easy it is to get this ink out of there. Okay, I'll be honest, I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a while. Well over five minutes, I think. So let's go ahead and suck up this water. I love doing that. Looks like I accidentally got a little bit of Noodler's Air Core blue black into the equation, but that's okay. Okay. So interesting. I, I think that my camera is picking this up okay, but you can see here how the water has definitely faded the lines slightly, but they're still there, crystal clear. They haven't feathered or washed out completely. So it looks like it's going to be one of those inks where water lifts kind of the top layer of ink and may affect the color of the ink, but definitely what you write with this ink will be permanent. You will be able to read this if the page gets damaged by water. And that's what you're looking for with a uh, fountain pen ink. I don't really expect most inks to be 100% waterproof. Some are, but I found that to be the exception rather than the, than the rule with water resistant inks. So this is pretty good. So if you're into water resistant inks like I am, this is a good choice. Okay, I almost forgot. One more thing we need to look at here is feather and bleed. So here, let's get this close to the camera really quick. No feathering whatsoever. It's a very crisp line, which is awesome. And let's see if we got any bleed through. None. None whatsoever. The lines are somewhat visible coming through there, but not a single patch of bleed. So that's excellent. Okay, last but not least, let's just take a look at our ANSI clean pen here. Still got some water in there, but that's okay. I'll get that later. But as you can see here, it is not discolored at all. Um, I didn't have to use any kind of pen flush. This is just with distilled water. I did notice that there is a stain up here and I have no idea what that is from. I haven't noticed that in the past, but that doesn't look like it would have been caused by this ink. It actually looks kind of blue, like maybe a bit blue ink in the past that I've used has stained the barrel a little bit. And my guess is that if I were to take the piston out, I could swab that line out anyway, but I'm a little lazy and you don't notice it because the, the piston is there. So it's not a big deal to me, but anyway, very clean pen, no damage that I can, I can see from the ink. So that's great. I think that what I've heard about modern iron gall inks, at least this one is correct. They are safe in your fountain pens. I think that's it. So let me know if you have any questions. And I will talk to you later. Bye.